Now gather around, I'm going to show you how to make a fire right here where I'm standing. And uh, if you're ever out in the rain like we are today and you need your fire kit, keep it in a dry spot like I did. I'm going to show you actually how to make fire the way I'm dressed today. I'm dressed from 200 years ago. And 200 years ago, one of the most common things we would have had in our survival bags or our pouches that I've seen me wearing was a, uh, a fire striker. Now, our blacksmith right over there, Ben Rogers, is actually making uh, some of these strikers. And he does have some of them over there, he said, uh, for sale. So if you want to get one, uh, that's where you'd want to go. Now, this is what's called flint and steel. And it's basically the idea of where a big lighter got its idea from, okay? The big lighter, when you rub the, the round thing, that's uh, the steel running across a piece of flint. And what happens? You get a spark. Watch this. This is hardened steel uh, from an old uh, file or something like that. And a little piece of flint. This is actually an old musket flint from my muskets that wore out. And instead of throwing it away, I like to use it for my fire kit because this black flint throws off real good spark. And if I don't get a good spark, I gotta shave off the rust, get rid of that rust. Or maybe I gotta sharpen up the edge on that flint. A dull edge won't give you a good spark. But if you got a good sharp piece of flint and a good striker, you should get sparks with every strike, just like I'm doing here. You see all those sparks? Those sparks are tiny shavings of steel coming off that. That's what it is. As a matter of fact, if I used this enough times, probably it would be more in my lifetime, I would actually wear it out. But it would take an awful lot. Good hard piece of steel will last a while. And that's what you're seeing there, those sparks. Now the way to do this is to capture the spark. And what I'm going to use to capture the spark is a cloth, just like I'm wearing, except it's been burned. And by burning the cloth, it becomes charred. The char is kind of like halfway between ashes and cloth, okay? It's just charred. Got to keep it dry, though. All it takes is a good little piece of char cloth there. Catch your spark. The first spark that hits that, it's going to light it. Now, to get the flame, I've got a nest over here. This nest is made out of some Spanish moss. I like to use the old pine needles. The ones that's been walked over on the trails and becomes fluff. Or maybe if it's rainy like today and we don't have any good dry material, find a palm tree that's got the boots still on there and yank them off and you got that hair back in the, between the bark and the, uh, the trunk of the tree and the boots. That's called monkey hair, people call it, or gorilla hair. But it, uh, it's actually the palm fiber and it works real good for fire starting. And even on a wet day, sometimes you can pull that palm tree apart and get some dry material for getting your fire going. Okay, let's see if we can get this to happen. One spark, or two sparks, whatever it takes to land on that to get it going. Here we go. There, there it is, already burning. One spark hit it there. Now our nest. A little bit of air. There you go. How about that? Whoa! What do you think? 